We have two wonderful scriptures this morning from the Old Testament, Psalm 121. I will lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and evermore. And from the New Testament, we have Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with you, Odia, and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, Help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Thank you, Jeanette. Wasn't that wonderful? Well, this morning I want to talk to you a little bit for a few minutes about one of my favourite cartoon characters. It was uh, Peanuts, and in my late teens, early 20s, that was really dominated a lot of my thinking. Put your hand up if you don't know, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Who doesn't know anything about Peanuts? There's a few, you can see the generation there. there. So parents, introduce your children to Peanuts <laughs> cartoons. Charlie Brown and Snoopy. Have you heard about Snoopy? Yes, so Snoopy. So Snoopy was Charlie Brown's dog. And uh, I was uh, so engaged with this one Christmas season, I painted a large Christmas banner uh, featuring the Peanuts gang to put up for our end of year youth group function. And of course, I wasn't a very good artist, but um, I was able to get an overhead transparency. You know those things uh, overhead? We found one when we were cleaning out in the office the other day. And I put a transparency on that and uh, uh, portrayed it up on the wall and we managed to trace it uh, out and then um, painted it up. It, it was looked pretty good. But think about today there, we just take a shot, a snapshot and click it off the internet and um, <coughs> put it on PowerPoint and there it is. 
uh, saves you um, hours and hours of work. Yeah. Looking back, um, I might have been a little obsessed with Peanuts cartoons because I collected a whole series of publications which featured all of the gang. Uh, this wasn't too difficult or expensive because the printing company I worked for printed and manufactured Hallmark cards. <laughs> and Hallmark published not only a range of peanut cards, uh, Peanuts cards, but also their books and their collectibles. And with staff buying privileges, I acquired a whole range of Peanuts cartoon products. I had quite the collection. I really did. Probably not as extensive or impressive as someone's Lego collection. <laughs> That's an in-house joke for those of people who, who don't know. Ask someone to explain it afterwards. But don't you just love all the characters? <coughs> Snoopy, Charlie Brown, Lucy Van Pelt, Schroeder, the pianist, Peppermint Patty, Sally Brown, Woodstock, Marcy, Spike, Franklin, Lydia, Pigpen, and who could forget Linus Van Pelt? Thoughtful and respectful, Linus is often the voice of reason among his peers. He's a deep thinker and a student of philosophy. Charlie Brown's best known for his uniquely striped shirt, and Linus is mostly associated with his ever-present security blanket, as well as being a bit of a philosopher in general know-it-all. Throughout the story of Peanuts, Lucy, Snoopy, Sally, and all the others work to no avail to separate Linus from his blanket. And even though his security blanket remains a major source of ridicule for the otherwise mature and thoughtful Linus, he re simply refuses to give it up. Rem Rel Linus remains delightfully hopeful, though, for what's going to come next. He's certain that this year, the great pumpkin will appear. He just knows it. Then the great pumpkin will rise from the pumpkin patch on Halloween. He carries a large bag of toys, and the great pumpkin character will deliver toys to children who believe in him. Of course, all of the rest of the Peanuts gang don't believe in the Great Pumpkin and continually mock Linus for his belief. One of the best known programs made was called A Charlie Brown Christmas. And I was reading an article recently that said in the weeks leading up to Christmas, that the, the movie A Charlie, Brown, A Charlie Brown Christmas aired on US national primetime television for the 50th time. Isn't that amazing? In a world where the latest, greatest technology is outdated in a matter of months, social media trends come and go in a matter of days, 50 years of anything becomes quite meaningful. We're going to watch a clip from the TV movie when Charlie Brown asks Chris what Christmas is all about. And Linus, the deep thinker, student of philosophy and now biblical scholar replies, I know what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. But as we watch Linus give his explanation, see if you can catch the moment that portrays a key point of the message this morning. You have to watch very closely. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men.
That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. So, who saw it? <laughs> you? What, what happened? He, he dropped the blanket, didn't he? He dropped the blanket when we, there, just there, he dropped the blanket. Right in the middle of speaking, Linus drops his security blanket. In the climatic scene where Linus shares what Christmas is all about, he drops the security blanket, and I think this is scripted as an intentional part of the story. Most telling in this is the specific moment he drops it when he utters the words, fear not. Isn't that amazing? Charles Schultz was the creator of the cartoon series, and it's pretty clear what message he wanted to convey. It's so simple, yet so brilliant. The, mess, the birth of Jesus separates us from our fears. The birth of Jesus separates us from our fears. The birth of Jesus frees us from the habits we are unable or unwilling to break ourselves. The birth of Jesus allows us to simply drop the false security we've been grasping so tightly and learn to trust and we need to learn to trust and cling to him instead. You know, this world can be a scary place, and most of us find ourselves grasping to something temporal for security. Whatever that thing may be. It might be our savings, it might be our homes, it might be our car, it might be our family, it might be our work. Essentially, ours is a world in which it has become very difficult for us to fear not. But in the midst of fear and insecurity, this simple cartoon image from 1965 continues to live on as an inspiration for us to seek true peace and true, true security in the, way, in the one place it's always been and can always still be found. Where can it be found? Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Because his name is power, his name's healing, his name is life. He breaks every stronghold. He shines through the shadows and he burns like a fire. You can shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. You can shout Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. You can speak Jesus for your family. You can speak the holy name, Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Some of you um, critics and uh, might have seen after the epic blanket dropping recitation of scripture, what does Linus do? Picks his blanket back up. Isn't that a bit anticlimactic? Why would, why would Linus pick up that old security blanket after so boldly proclaiming an end to fear? Why does he leave the stage with that security blanket still in his hand? I think we realise that we all carry that same blanket. A couple of questions for each one of us this morning might be, what's your security blanket? Or where do you find your security? Just like Linus, we may stand tall at, in a moment of faith and conviction, a, a moment when scripture hidden and in our heart comes to life and all else is flung aside as we experience and proclaim the true freedom and security that only Jesus can, can give. But at some point, out of habit, we reach down and pick that thing right back up. Faith, while powerful, is also delicate. And Linus clearly knows the truth and clearly proclaims the truth. The knowledge is there and the wisdom is there and the passion is there. So why does he pick it back up? I think it's because we all do the same thing. You know, we know, we feel, we proclaim, yet we gaze in the mirror one morning to find that tattered old blanket draped over our shoulder yet again. 
and we realize that we've become so used to it being there that we hardly even notice it. I do it, and you do it, we all do it. That's not where the blanket story ends. The show ends with the Peanuts gang not just singing, but clearly and unquestionably, unquestionably singing in worship. Even the musical style at the point of the show is different from anything else heard previously. The obvious song to end with a, the show would have been Oh Christmas Tree, Oh Christmas Tree, because that note those notes have been playing gently in the background. But the focus is no longer on the tree. The focus has become bigger than the tree. The focus is on Jesus. And with this new focus, the kids instead slide effortlessly into singing, Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. And what we're now witnessing is essentially an impromptu worship service. Isn't that cool? <laughs> but before any of this happens, Linus parts with that blanket again and he lays it down for good at the base of the tree. Just as we should strive to not just lay our blanket down just anywhere, but we should, we should leave it forever behind us at the foot of the cross for our own good and for the good of others. So Linus and his friends moved from speaking truth and hearing truth into a deeper place of worship where they finally respond to the truth, much like those shepherds that we've heard about over the last few weeks were instructed to fear not. So as we enter 2024, what should we do? You know, all of history and prophecy and promise is completed in Jesus. Every part of your life, your work, your family, your relationships, your friends, your memories and dreams are completed in Jesus. Your whole life is completed in Jesus. And last week we sang Christmas carol called uh, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And it includes the words, our hopes and fears through all the years are met in thee tonight. And this morning, at the start of 2024, I invite you to join me in giving up our tattered old blankets. Whatever they may be, they might be our hopes and fears, our dreams. Maybe you need to give your life back to Jesus. And uh, this is how we're going to do that. You've all got a little bit of a slip of paper. <clears throat> we were going to do balloons, but I think it was a little bit hot and, and tricky to do balloons in this church. So what I want you to do is take that little piece of paper and write on it your hopes, your dreams, your fears, what you want to give up and there. And we're going to collect them. So we'll take, when you put the, your name, when you wrote, don't put your name on it, just write what that is. And we'll collect them with one basket that's going to go down this aisle and, and collect it. That half will get in, in another basket. We're going to swap the baskets around and they're going to go back and you're going to take someone's hopes and dreams or fears in your hand and then you're going to gather in a group of three or four or five people and pray for that person. You up for that? That? If, you don't, if, you, if you're uncomfortable to do that, you don't have to do that. You can just pray quietly, but just hold someone's hopes and fears, dreams, what they're giving up in your hand. That's a precious moment because that's somebody that they're giving up for God. So you take a moment to do that and then we'll collect them. Thank you. Well, thank you people for uh, participating. And uh, sorry the logistics weren't quite uh, as smooth as it could have been. And, uh, but I think we got there in the end. So, so you can, uh, <clears throat> we'll just to bring, bring everybody back now, and uh, thank you. So as we come to the close this, this morning, let's remember the words from our, the reading in Ephesians chapter 4. Don't, do not be anxious about anything, 
but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.